Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Books Are Everywhere. So today I am back with yes another weekly reading vlog. It is Monday, it's the start of the week and I have a very busy and exciting week ahead of me. I am back at uni today and on Thursday I'm working um three days and i'm also going to london with alex for the day on friday which will be very very exciting and we're gonna also have a little bit of a sleepover as well and um hopefully go for a run on saturday together which will be nice but that depends how tired we are after friday going to london so we will see but you will see book shopping later on in this video um and things like that so i hope you enjoy the rest of this vlog but let's see what i'm reading this week i am doing something this week which i've never tried before on booktube which is to try and film two vlogs in one go um so i'm going to be doing a challenge vlog which you will see on another video um where i read the books that mark bought me for christmas um in a video that we did um before christmas it was like he bought me five books um and he wrapped them and i, I unwrapped them on camera and i'm going to be doing a vlog where i read those books so look out for that vlog so i'm going to be filming that alongside this vlog so i will be mentioning some of the books that i'm reading obviously but i probably won't go as as in depth as i usually do because i will go much more in depth on that vlog so look out for that one but Anyway, I finished Twin Crowns last night. I did give a lot of my thoughts and feelings at the end of last week's vlog, but I really enjoyed this one. Follows two sisters who are separated at birth. One is brought up in the palace as a princess and the other one is brought up with the witches. The one that lives with the witches, which is Ren, um, does know that she has a sister and is taught about the palace and her um, parents' murder and things like that. Whereas the princess who lives in the palace has led a very sheltered life, doesn't know she has a sister and things like that. But they basically end up kind of battling for the throne. They kind of swap lives. Really, really interesting. I absolutely love this book. I thought it was so, so fun, entertaining, a quick read. Considering it's quite a chunky book as well, I found it just so quick and easy to get through. Really like the writing style, really like the sisters. I really like the love interest. There was just so much to love about this book. I think I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. It is not like a new favorite, it didn't blow me away as such, but it was just a very, very enjoyable read. And also some of the ending felt a little bit rushed, which did let me down a little compared to the rest of the book. And then the very, very end was good again. Um, it was just like 20, 30 pages, like towards the end of the book that I was a bit like, this is feeling like really rushed now. But yeah, I did really enjoy this one. It was great, 4.5 stars. So right now I'm actually between reading books and I'm not reading anything, but I do have a book to start today, which is Vicious by V. Schwab. Very excited to start reading this one. I am going to probably predominantly listen to the audiobook, which I think there's a new audiobook out. Don't know if I can get access to it yet because I use Scribd, but anyway, this follows Victor Ellie, I think is how you pronounce the name. And they started out at college as roommates, brilliant, arrogant, lonely boys who recognise the same sharpness and ambition in one another. And I think they both end up finding these kind of abilities that they have, these extraordinary abilities that they can develop. And they end up in kind of like an X-Men type situation where they have these extraordinary abilities. Um, and I think they then become enemies. <laughs> and then we see them 10 years later. Um, and he's trying to, one of them is trying to hunt down the other one, I believe. But yeah, we will see where this goes. The synopsis is very long, so that was me badly trying to um, make it shorter for you. Um, but yeah, I will be reading this one. Buddy reading it with Alex. Hopefully we're gonna finish it this week. I have some tabs in here and very excited to start another series by V. Schwab. This is only a duology and uh, we also have Extraordinary to read as well, which I think we're gonna read after we finish. So yeah, very excited for that one. And then I'm also gonna start, and this is for the other vlog that I'm gonna be doing alongside this. I am going to be starting Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. And I'm very excited to, to read this one. This is one that Mark, picked up for me i had never heard of it before i've heard of 1000 years of solitude which is sorry 100 years of solitude which is his other book i think it's slightly more famous um so i heard of that one hadn't heard of this one and 
Mark picked this up on the idea of something that he really likes and he thinks I will like as well, which I really like that. I really like that he went for some books he knew I would buy myself and some books I wouldn't necessarily buy myself. So I'm very excited to read this one and you will see more of comprehensive thoughts and feelings in my other vlog related to this challenge, but I will discuss this a little bit on here. So this one follows Fermina, who is a rebuffed, hopeless, romantic Florentina for impassioned advances and she married somebody else instead. And then during that half century, Florentino has fallen into the arms of many delighted women, but has loved none other than Fermina. Having sworn his eternal love to her, he lives for the day when he can court her again. And then Fermina's husband is killed, trying to retrieve his pet parrot from a mango tree. Florentino seizes the, his chance to declare his enduring love, but can young love find new life in the twilight of their lives? So yeah, this is like a romance. It sounds really interesting. Very excited to read it. But yeah, more thoughts and feelings on this one on my other vlog when that one comes out probably at the end of the month um because i have quite a few books to get through for that vlog but anyway this is the start of this weekly reading vlog i hope you enjoy following me along and i hope it's not too confusing that i'm going to be filming two vlogs at once and yeah i will speak to you soon hi it is wednesday i honestly wasn't planning on updating you today because I am knackered, I've been at work the past two days and today has been a big day at work because I've had like a review thing which I've not had before and it was really really positive but I am very very tired but I've gotten home to some book mail which I want to show you so I thought I would take this opportunity to update you on my current reads and open the parcel that I have. Firstly I have started Loving the Time of Cholera, I've literally read 16 pages and the text in this is so small it's so small and it looks like the it, the font's been printed like twice if that makes sense like it's very thick font but i am enjoying it actually um i like the writing but that is basically all i can say because i'm only 16 pages in so far um the first chapter is 51 pages long so it's a very long chapter and i don't know if that's how all of the chapters are in this book but we will see. I have a feeling they might be quite long ones. Yeah, I think the second chapter is around 50 pages long as well. <laughs> Not sure about the third, but yeah, quite long chapters, but I like the writing so far. And then I'm also reading Vicious by V. Schwab, which I'm enjoying so, so much. I am not exactly sure where I am right now. I think I'm around page... 170 but i'm listening to the audiobook which i'm actually really really enjoying so far um this is very superhero-esque which i actually quite like it also flips around a lot in terms of um being 10 years ago from where it's originally kind of started from um so it starts um 10 years after victor and eli are in college as roommates and then it flashes backwards to when they're actually in college. So it's 10 years later, Victor has been in prison, escaped from prison, and is determined to get revenge on the man who put him in prison, which is Eli. <laughs> um, so Eli has spent the, the years hunting down and killing every extraordinary he can find, commits to have a crime against God, all except his psychic, a woman whose power is persuasion and whom he cannot defy. Um, so it's kind of about their relationship 10 years after they were roommates in college. Um, and then it flashes backwards to how they got there, essentially, which I'm actually really, really enjoying so far. I love, love the writing in this, honestly. I absolutely love it because it just... I feel like there is something with V Schwab that, like, she has such different ideas, which I love about her. She's very creative and all of her books are very different. But her writing has the same kind of undertone and I feel like you can just identify that, which I just really, really love because I absolutely love her writing. So yeah, really enjoying this. Hoping I can read a bit physically at some point because I just want to see how that actually goes um, and how it kind of comes across in a physical format. But I'm sure I will get to that at some point um, this week. But so far I've been listening to the audiobooks, I've been driving so much and yeah, it's been um, very enjoyable. I really like the audiobook. And then the parcel that I have is from World of Books. 
and I'm hoping that this is what I want it to be in the edition that I want it to be in. Yay! <laughs> it's the right edition! This is, if you remember last week, I bought a copy of these Violent Delights um, and I wanted the UK hardback to replace my US hardback and I managed to order another US hardback, but... Now I've got a UK hardback that matches our violent ends. It is not in the best condition, but it was secondhand. But honestly, I am I'm fine with it. I just wanted the UK hardback because I will I will actually get these down and show you because I will explain why this has been so annoying. So I have had this beautiful owl crate edition for a while, um, which is absolutely stunning, and the undercover is beautiful as well and i've not read this but like i absolutely love this edition so much um but under the dust jacket it has it like this on the dust jacket the title's like this and it's a few centimeter of millimeters smaller than the uk hardback so this is a very nerdy finickety thing so i hope this doesn't annoy people because i know i know it's annoying <laughs> but yeah i've had this for a while um, which was lovely, um, until I then got the UK hardback, very new edition, of our Violent Nets. <laughs> Can you see where my, my annoyance comes in? Can you see it? Especially because I have these stacked on my shelves, and they just look completely different. Like, I just couldn't deal with this. Um, so I've been thinking that while I could, I would try and find a U UK hardback of the first book so that they'd actually match on my shelves. Um, because I haven't read it, I don't know how bothered I am about having this edition. Um, as lovely as the Alcrate edition is, I think I'd honestly rather have this actual matching spines. Even though the covers are pretty much the same in the American and the UK. They actually match in size and in spine. And I think it would just be so much nicer to look at these in a stack rather than to look at what it was originally, oh, which is kind of like that. So I'm just going to put this like in storage for a while and see whether I do end up keeping it or not. I kind of doubt that I will, but I am going to see after I've actually read it, which will hopefully be soon. Don't have like plans to read this soon, but I would like to now there's an actual duology that is complete. So this is the fairy edition of Our Violent Ends um, and then the standard UK hardback of these Violent Delights, which is the one that I wanted to match, yay! <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go now and relax for the rest of the evening as much as I can. Um, I'm at uni tomorrow and then I'm seeing Alex and I'm seeing Alex for the next few days and we're going to London on Friday. So yeah, I'm excited for that. But yeah, I'm gonna go now and I will speak to you soon. It's Friday, we're going to London, we're getting excited. on a train, I'm getting on a train for the first time in two years, both of us. Going to London for the first time in two years. Oh, I've been to London. Oh, I'm I sorry. <laughs> She's just 
is <laughs> hi. It is Saturday morning and we went to London yesterday and we had a good time, didn't we? We did. We had a very busy day um going around bookshops. We, we broke did our shoulders. We broke our shoulders <laughs> <laughs> from carrying a lot of books. Um we managed to not go on the tube for the entire day, but we did go on. And the Uber boat. The Uber boat, which Alex found <laughs> very funny. Why is there an Uber boat? <laughs> which was actually quite nice. Um, it's a really nice boat. But it's like it's like Transport for London run, and you can just tap in and out. But it's also like owned by Uber, or like they do the transportation. I feel like it must be quite a new thing. So I don't think it was a thing last no, time I went. Mark doesn't remember it either. Yeah. Mum remembers it from last year, so. I don't know, but there's an Uber boat that goes up and down the Thames if you want to use it. We went on that. That was pretty good. It's actually apart a really from, nice boat. Like two of them not showing up. Yeah, <laughs> apart from that. Um, we didn't go on the tube. We walked everywhere. We tried to go to the Tate and failed because it's booking only and we didn't realise that. But yeah, the main thing we went for is to buy books and... We really succeeded. <laughs> we bought books. We had like a couple of shots where we didn't actually buy anything in. Um, surprisingly we didn't buy a single thing in foils yeah which usually we go to foil like both of us have gone to foils and bought american copies of stuff that american we can't get specifically yeah which are more expensive which we didn't manage to like find any there wasn't actually that many was there like no, I saw... there wasn't that many and i feel like it was the same selection as last time we were yeah. two years ago like i feel like they haven't really added to their selection that much and there was more american paperbacks but we were probably seeing those in more yeah places or they're more like available and also i feel like more like waterstones has gotten better with their american selection so i don't know but yeah we didn't buy anything foils we didn't buy anything in waterstones either because it was one of those things where we were like well we can we get can them get at online <laughs> and at home but we first went to gaze the word which is an independent bookshop and i think it's in holborn no where is it actually where is it actually uh, it's near Russell Square tube station. That's probably yeah. the easiest way yeah. to like direct you. Um, and yeah, it was. Uh, I've been a couple times before. You've never been. That was my first time. It and yeah, it's an independent LGBT bookshop. It sells a mixture of nonfiction, fiction, graphic novels, um, yeah, Basically, memoir, everything that's a book and but LGBT. Gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I bought one book, which was Tide Song by Wendy Zhu, who is also the author and illustrator. I think we illustrate as well. She illustrates. Um, the author and illustrator of Mooncakes, which was one of my favourite books of last year, which I absolutely loved. And I've really wanted to get this one for a while, and it's just really, really hard to get. Mooncakes was also really hard to get, but it is absolutely gorgeous. It's Illustrations so and the colours, and I found the same with Mooncakes, like I just absolutely loved. Um, and it's about, it's apparently aimed at ages 8 to 12, which I didn't really know, but I'm happy to read it anyway. And it follows a girl called Sophie, who isn't great at magic, but her family wants to, her to attend the best magic academy, and they send her to train with relatives. And I think it's about her kind of learning magic, but also about her friendship, because um, the tagline is the only thing harder than magic is friendship. But I love this cover, I love the art, and I'm very excited to read this one. What did you buy from Gaze the Word, Alex? <laughs> I got two books because I have less restraint. <laughs> I got How to Be Ace by Rebecca Burgess. Burgess? Yeah. I'm not good at pronouncing Burgess. names. Which I got because I'm Ace and I wanted to pick up an Ace book from Gaze the Word. And this one, it's, it's also it's a memoir, but it's like a memoir graphic novel. And Something. as far as I can tell, it's just about the author growing up ace as it says um no how to be ace a memoir of growing up asexual that's yeah. what it says it so yeah it's about that and i'm really interested to read it they also kind of section parts of the shop off by sexuality yeah. it um, seemed to be like the non-fiction specifically yeah was yeah the fiction was more mixed by. in wasn't yeah. it there wasn't really sections but yeah non-fiction was more the, there was that one fiction section at the back that had like Along the top, it said lesbian, uh, and then it just had this like, is? yeah, that's what it yeah. was. But then that's also where um, the Claire Khan book was. Oh yeah, which is which just said ace, yeah, even though it was in the lesbian section. Oh, well. So that was a bit weird. Um, and then I also got 
We Are Okay by Nina Nicole because Beth made me. <laughs> I did. I was like, you need to buy this because it's really hard to get. And I've read this and absolutely yeah. love it so much. And I love Nina Nicole. To be fair, I have been wanting to read it. And I am. I started it on the train back yesterday and I'm like 50 pages in. It's Yay. good so far. I absolutely love it. If you haven't read any of Nina Lacour's books, read them. go and read <laughs> Nina Lacour books because I've read that one. I've read You Know Me Well, which uh, is co-written by David Leviathan, and I've read um, Everything Leads to You, which is one of my favourite books. Same with that we are okay. So yeah, read those. But yeah, then we went to Foils and we didn't buy anything, but we enjoyed. Yeah, the I ambiance. just like being in Foils. <laughs> yeah, it's just a nice bookshop to be in. It is. And then we went to Waterstones and. Piccadilly and also didn't buy anything. Waterstones Piccadilly is like the god tier Waterstones. <laughs> it's like the mothership of Waterstones. If you're in London, go to Waterstones Piccadilly. <laughs> it is like how many floors? Six? It's seven? Huge. Yeah. It might be seven with the basement. And um, it's all like marble. When yeah, you walk in, it is it's really, so really pretty. beautiful. <laughs> it's a really beautiful shop and it has probably one of the best selections of. Yeah. Books. my stomach is rumbling very loudly because <laughs> we've been for a run this morning and haven't eaten yet and it's like quarter past ten but anyway so we then went to forbidden planet and we were like up until this point we were like well we're doing quite well we haven't really bought yeah, that much yeah we've not, not got that much been a good trip so far and then slash a bad trip so yeah depending on how you look at it and then we went to forbidden planet which was yeah that went downhill very quickly <laughs> yeah so forbidden planet is as you probably know um sci-fi and fantasy based fiction graphic novels um and comics a manga and a massive of, like, manga section stuff as well yeah, yeah so it's like a mixture of like fandom stuff and books but the um store in london which is it's i can't remember massive. which it's on it's Shaftesbury on Avenue? Shaftesbury is Avenue, it? yeah. yeah. Um, and it is massive and the entire downstairs is books, comics, graphic novels and manga. And it so. had a better <laughs> American. American selection than foils, which surprised me because that's what like, I always go to foils for. Yeah, we found books in there that we have never seen. Um, so we both bought a copy of The Other Side of the Sky um, by Amy Kauf Kaufman? Kaufman? How do you pronounce that? I say Amy... Kaufman. I don't know. <laughs> I'm um, thinking about it now. <laughs> and Megan Spooner, who Amy Kaufman wrote, co-wrote Illuminae and These Broken Stars. Yeah. Um and something else maybe. Aurora. Aurora. Aurora yes. Aurora thingy. Burning. Yeah. Aurora Rising. Aurora Zen. Those books. Yeah. Which I haven't read and I've wanted to read this for ages and never ever seen a copy or been never. able to get hold Literally of a copy. Never. And they had two. So we bought them both. Um, just got to find the second one. Did yeah. you notice this is also a duology? So once we do yeah. find the second one, we'll be, did, yeah. we'll be done, which is cool. Um, and this one doesn't really have much of a synopsis. It probably has one inside, maybe? No? It just says, A goddess and a prince discover that they are destined to save their separate worlds or destroy them completely. There's the tagline. Really all it says? Yep, there's nothing inside. But I imagine we'll probably buddy read this. Oh, yeah. Um, if yeah. we manage to find the second book and then we can do a buddy read of both of them. But yeah. Maybe we need to hit up Forbidden Planet in July. See true, true. Then... That is a good plan. Yeah. Um, and then I also picked up The Chosen and The Beautiful, and this is £7 off, so it was down from 19 99 I think, to 12 99 which I'm very happy about. They had those stickers, not necessarily £7 off, but something yeah. off, like almost yeah. every single book, it was crazy. Yeah, so this, is, especially hardbacks. Yeah. And then even the paperbacks, some of them had like a pound off or £2 off or I whatever. I don't remember how much I got off them. But, <laughs> but <laughs> this, was like, this is like a little book which I like, and it's, a, from what I understand, it's an Asian... In no, Asian retelling that's inspired by The Great Gatsby. Um, and I've heard good things about it, and I know that Peru's Project has read it, or is it's on one of her TBRs. Um, and it sounded really cool when she was talking about it, so when I saw it, I was like, I'm gonna pick this up with £7 off, and I've never seen it before, so very excited. And then I also did a bit of an impulse purchase of Horror Hotel, <laughs> Because I've never seen this before, but it sounds so, so interesting. And I absolutely love the cover and the design of this book. Um, and sometimes, I don't know why, I just feel like I'm in the mood for horror sometimes. And this follows a YouTube famous ghost gang who visit an LA hotel that's no notorious for tragedy. And to they want to secretly film it after dark. And they expect it to just be like all of their other hauntings, that there's nothing really going on. It's all kind of... Um, 
not true but then they stumble upon something unexpected in the former room of a gruesome serial killer and they quickly realize they're in over their heads sometimes it's the dead who need our help and the living we should fear and also this is super super short it's just over 200 pages um love to the cover so i thought yep i'm gonna pick this one up yes yeah, so you bought four I bought books, four books yeah. including the other oh, side one. yeah so well i mean technically more than four books because i got the the Tenzer, Tenzerate series by Neon Yang, which is a bind up of four novellas that That's are cool. a series. So this is all four books in one. And I don't really know a lot about this, but I know that the author is MB and oh, really? the character cool. is MB, which oh, is why it was on cool. my radar. Nice. Um, but yeah, it just says across four novellas, Neon Yang establishes himself as a feminist in I can't repeat out loud. <laughs> As a feminist in bold defiance of the limitations of their genre, now available in a single volume, these four novellas trace the oh my god generational decline <laughs> of an empire and unfurl a world that is rich and strange beyond anything you've ever dreamed. In the Tenzer Eight series, you will find rebellious non-binary scions of empire, sky-spanning nagas with experimental souls, revolutionary engineers bent on bringing power to the people, a pugilist? pugilist monks, packs of loyal reports, raptors, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of words in this, like, and much much more, <laughs> much much more, um, I like that they've done it in a binder though, I think that's yeah. really cool. And I have the first one, I got it, I feel a bit bad because I got it as a, like a birthday present from my brother. Um, but it's always annoyed the crap out of me because the spine's like not printed right. Oh, really? And so it's like got half the cover on the oh, well, well, not half the cover, it. but it's got a bit of the cover on the spine and it really annoys me. So when I saw this, I just thought it was like fifteen pounds and then it had like four pounds off or something. Yeah. So that was like three books that I was getting for way cheaper anyway, and then I wouldn't have the annoyingness of the spine of the first one. So I just picked this up. Oh, and then I got The Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker, which I mainly bought because of the cover, because it's pretty <laughs> I have a proof copy of this, which I haven't Gee. read yet, so we should that. buddy read yep, it. Yeah, buddy read. <laughs> I think it might be a standalone as well. Oh, that's even cool. I'm not sure. Um, I, was gonna, I was just looking for my phone to look it up. Hi, phone! We're filming <laughs> on my phone. But yeah, it just, it's... Start, it sounds like it starts off being set in London and then moves to being set in Japan, which will be quite cool. And it follows someone who's a reaper. I do love the cover as well. It's Very pretty. A pretty cover. So I'm intrigued by that one and I'm excited that we can buddy read it, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> and then I got The Empress of Salt and Fortune by... By someone. <laughs> ni... 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 Bao, bo? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. My this issue... Person. There we go. My issue with filming is that I always forget to, to check. look up the names before. Well, not even look up. I always forget to check to see if there's any I need to look up yeah, beforehand. Yeah, same. Me too. And then I get to that point and I'm like, oh shit, I should look that too. up. Um, anyway, this has been on my t on my radar for ages. It's been on my Amazon wish list for a really long time, oh. and I've just not got around to it. I want to take so it off. <laughs> I need to take it off. Yeah. And so I saw it there, and I was like, I'm gonna get that. <laughs> I've no idea what it's about, but I think you've read it. Yeah, I have read it, and it kind of was a bit of hit and miss for me. It's inspired by, I think it's Chinese mythology. It kind of looks like that. From yeah, the cover. which yeah. I don't know if I necessarily knew beforehand. And I feel like if I did know it beforehand, then I would have enjoyed it a lot more. And I think it might follow an animal's perspective. Yeah, I mean, if I it remember says rightly. Rabbit. Rabbit, a handmaiden sold to her parents. Oh, okay. Sold by her parents to the palace for the for a yeah. lack of five bastards back. It's but very... I've heard that rabbit is actually a rabbit. Okay, because it's, it's not sure. <laughs> very mythical. So yeah. go into it with that. And I mean there is a rabbit on the front. Yeah. I did enjoy it. I think I gave it three and a half stars when I read it or three yeah. stars. Like I still enjoyed it, but it kind of also went over my head a bit. But I feel like if I'd had more prior knowledge that I'd have enjoyed it more. So Yeah. I mean I think it was doing the rounds a couple of years ago and I've just always been intrigued yeah. by it and wanted to pick it up. So I was really happy when I saw it there. So I bought these very pretty books that I have, and Alex bought <laughs> more pretty books. So yeah, that was our trip to London. We're going to go and eat something now because we're both very hungry and, and then we've both been rambling. And then maybe visit a few bookshops. <laughs> so <laughs> I will speak to you soon.
Bye. Hi, it is Sunday night, so I am here to end this vlog and end this week. Um, I am so tired after having a lovely couple of days with Alex and then being at work today. I am very, very sleepy and I need to go to bed soon, but I have been on a live show with Alex for the past couple of hours and we've done some good reading, which I'm very happy with. We did Valentine's live sprints because it's Valentine's Day tomorrow and we read Pride and Prejudice by Laura Wood, which is a retelling by Barrington Stoke, um, which is a dyslexia friendly publisher. And Alex was explaining um, that this means they have a specific font which they use across all of their books and they have a specific paper as well which is off-white colour so it's not quite white and it also is thicker than normal paper so you can't see the text on the other side which I think is just amazing and they have such a range of um, books by different authors. We have read books by, well we read um, a Sky Paint of Gold by Laura Wood last year and really enjoyed it so when we saw this one was coming out we really wanted to pick it up and they we also found out they do a few other historical like classic retellings so there's Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights by a different author so we're hoping to kind of pick those up at some point because this one was so 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 good I really really enjoyed it I felt like it was done incredibly well and I have a massive amount of admiration for Laura Wood and the fact that she has managed to write the story of Pride and Prejudice in 130 pages in a very few words um, and made it really really accessible to a wider audience whether that audience is has dyslexia or not I think this is one honestly for a lot of people I feel like this has a wide audience out there I really really enjoyed it um I read Pride and Prejudice last year I read all of Jane Austen's major works last year um and I really liked it but having it simplified in this version was brilliant I don't know how she did it um I was still struggling to follow some of the characters in this one because there is so many but I definitely found it a lot easier to follow than the actual book but it still had like all of the amazing like feelings of the original book I mean you can't exactly replicate Jane Austen's work and I don't think anyone would necessarily want to it's hers um but it does use some of the original quotes which I really like um and I just think it was really well done, really well done. It is literally the the story of Pride and Prejudice with all of the original characters, but it's just simplified and I just really like that. Um, I am struggling on what to rate this because I think for me, this isn't a five star, but for what it is, it's a five star for sure. Um, so I think I'm going to go with a 4.5. Um, because personally for me and my enjoyment of this book, I would say it's a four, but with what like rating it as what it is is a five um and I don't think it could have done any better so I'm gonna put 4.5 um and be kind of in the middle and I hope that kind of makes sense to why I've gone with that rating um but yeah really really enjoyed it either way and then I also finished Vicious by V. Schwab which is my first five star read of the year I absolutely love this book. This was just done so, so well. I was so absorbed in the story. I just absolutely fell in love with it. The audiobook was amazing. The narrator was just absolutely amazing. I only read the last like 10 or 20 pages of this book because I listened to the rest of it on audiobook and I think it was just done amazingly. This one, I just can't describe the writing in this it's so intense the chapters are so short and I feel like if I had been reading it physically I would have found it very hard to put down um and there's just some lines in here that you just like wow like someone wrote that like she wrote that and I just have a lot of admiration for that because she comes out with these like amazing amazing sentences and not even just like amazing and like that they're beautiful or that they're, like they are beautiful but a lot of it is just like I would have never thought to have put words together in that order and made a sentence like that. I can't describe it. She has this such unique way of writing that I think comes across in all of her books, no matter the um, protagonist, no matter the subject, because she writes very different books, which I appreciate a lot. And this one is very kind of like, it follows extraordinaries who are superheroes and it's very much like a superhero book with, um, but they're all morally grey which I just find so fascinating because I can't help but root for some of the characters and I feel like it just throws your brain 
out of whack because they're all morally grey and that is what she did in Dark Shade of Magic as well and although I loved a Dark Shade of Magic this one has definitely grabbed my attention more and I'm finding it easier to follow which I really like so I'm rating this one five out of five stars it's my first five star of the year I loved it it was so good we're gonna start villain villains no vengeful the series is called villains and it confuses me we're gonna start vengeful tomorrow which i'm very excited for but also nervous because i hope it lives up to vicious um and then i'm also reading love in the time of cholera i'm now 125 pages in so i've read a chunk of this book um and i'm really really enjoying it i feel like i haven't talked much about this so far i am finding it very very slow and i think part of that is because there's only five chapters and they're all 50 pages at least long <laughs> so it is it does feel very long when you're reading it and also the text is like incredibly small um which makes it feel longer too especially when i'm reading other books so that's the text size um but i'm really enjoying it and i feel like once i get into it and once i've read like 10 pages i feel really absorbed in the story when i'm reading it it doesn't feel long it feels like I'm completely there in the story I'm very involved um with what's going on but I feel like it's more looking back on like how little I've read over a period of time where I'm used to reading quite quickly that's when it feels quite slow um rather than the actual story itself because it feels very like it really really draws you in which I really like um and I just feel like I don't know if I've read a book exactly like this that really really like drew me in like this and makes me feel like I'm just there in the story which I really like but anyway as you can probably tell I'm very tired and I need to go to sleep so I am going to leave this vlog here I will be doing another vlog starting tomorrow as usual which I do have a busy week ahead but hopefully I will manage to get some reading in as well um over the course of the week so I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will see you in the next one bye